What's up guys? My name is Nick Davis. Welcome to another 239 Flies Fly Tying video. Today I'm going to teach you how to tie the Gangster Crab. Uh, it's very similar to the Gangster Gurgler, uh, if you watched that video already. Uh, it is used a lot of the same materials, use a lot of the same color scheme. Um, just a badass pattern, a little bit smaller, sinks as opposed to floats. Um, and we'll go over the materials as uh, we're tying them. So you can kind of get the idea of, you know, we use the same materials in a lot of our flies. And there's a reason for that is once you kind of figure out where a material goes and how to use it and what it works best for, you'll know where in the sequence of events it should be tied in on the hook. And keep in mind, there's no right or wrong to this. I'm trying to not necessarily teach you how to tie this fly better. I'm trying to teach you how to be a better fly tire and, and to get you to think creatively. And uh, I hope that by the end of this video, we'll do that. So without further ado, let's get kicking. So the gangster crab, let's get to it. We're going to start off with a Daiichi 2546 uh, size two. I really like this hook. It's very useful for a lot of flies. Strong, sharp, cheap enough. It's a good hook. I like it. Start by laying our thread base down. Start at the eye of the hook. Work back to where the thread hangs, just by the barb of the hook, just inside of it. Trim off that excess. Grab our red medium cactus chenille. So we're going to tie the watermelon flavor. We're going to tie that in below the bend of the hook. Put a few wraps on it. Do this for a lot of our flies, almost all of them. Flavor, function, all of it. And tie a few wraps in front of it like that and trim. We take our eyes next, a pair of eyes. You don't have to use eyes, it's personal preference. If you want to make the eyes, I got a video on how to make them. These are the uh, Loon UV Thick, some glitter, some Mason Hard Mono, and uh, some Loon Hard Head. Um, but it is vital that you use uh, Mason Hard Mono to make the eyes out of. Otherwise, these eyes if you make them with regular monofilament or fluorocarbon, will foul around the hook shank inevitably. It doesn't matter how short you make them, it's just not stiff enough to stay put. <clears throat> so, and you can use 30 or 40, doesn't really matter. Both of them are stiff enough to stay put. We're going to have to use them at all. Take our pseudo hair. This is, I started using pseudo hair instead of craft fur because um, I think it's a little more durable and it's actually a little easier to work with too, I think. Um, it's got a little better of a taper and the, the fibers are a lot finer than uh, regular craft fur. I just, I like it. It, lo it looks better. Fish care, probably not, but I care. And you kind of notice after tying it, some of these colors, if you get it in a bunch of different colors, they all kind of have different characteristics. The, the chartreuse tends to be a little thinner than, um, than the other colors. I still think the, uh, the pink is probably the most consistent and easier to work with. But you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about if you, if you get a couple. There's just, all of them are good. There's just a little bit of variance in um, the colors. I'm sure it has to do with the dyes when they do it. So, enough diarrhea of the mouth there. Grab your lice brush. If you don't have one of these, you need to ask yourself why you hate efficiency. It's a tool you never know you needed until you had it, and then you wonder how it is you tied one fly without it before. You ever wake up in the morning and look at your hair, and you're like, oof, I really need to comb that. Well, flies are hair. Treat them as such. All right. So we got our chartreuse. We'll come back over, grab our sand next. You can use pink too. Um, 
along with the chartreuse and make, you know, that very popular electric chicken color scheme. Looks really good. Probably going to start offering it, but uh, for purposes of demonstration today, I'm just going to tell you the watermelon that you're familiar with seeing. Do the same thing, three or four clumps. Don't get too crazy because otherwise when you start, when you match these two tails up together, it's just going to be way too thick and bulky. Just take a few of these longer fibers out, shorten the taper up a little bit. Got both of these together. One more time, just kind of blend them. And now, because this fly is going to be weighted, or the, the appearance side of the fly is going to be on the side by the hook point, we're going to tie in the tan on the bottom and the chartreuse up. And we'll trim, trim that up before we tie it on. We're going to tie this on right on top of the monofilament, or right on top of the crustacean eyes. And wrap forward. Take a brown Sharpie, or any other color you'd like. Just showing you how I do it. But I'm not going to tell you how you do it. You live your life. Put three bars in there. Looks pretty good. All right, next we've got some pink Palmer chenille, it's medium Palmer chenille. Love this stuff. Take a little bit more than we need, but about two and a half inches will be more than enough. And if it doesn't lay super flat like this side, it's more crinkled like this side, it's fine. To be honest with you, I almost prefer the crinkled side on this fly because it gives it a little bit of texture. And uh, this looks a little bit more leggier, if that's a word, leggier. Let me just spell that. I can't. So it doesn't look manufactured or uh, super straight. So, all right. So pull that and start palmering. Normally put about two and a half wraps on top of the polar fiber tail, and then we're going to put yeah, three or four right behind it. Trim off that excess, and then just put a few thread wraps on top of it to secure it. All right. Next, this is the medium crystal hackle. Uh, much like the gangster gurgler, um, for my custom orders, I use a you know a saddle hackle or um, you know a, just a regular uh, hackle and start palmer in that end but you know for the purpose of this kit I just uh, same same as before I just I don't feel the need to require you to spend forty to fifty dollars on a cape that you know is not an optional step but not really the an accent step we'll put it that way but for the time being We'll just do it this way. All right, and we put a few dots, a few black dots over it to kind of simulate, you know, uh, the barring. And just start palmering. Twist that so it comes the right way. And we're going to wrap around this a few times. I think that's at four, five. Six wraps. Not to go too crazy, but we want to put we want to put a few on there. A little securing wrap. Trim that. And then just kind of pull all of these forward and put a few thread wraps over them to secure them. Take your brush, you can take your 
and just kind of tease those fibers out a little bit if they're a little stuck which mine happen to be no worries no bubbles no troubles that looks pretty good all right next the dreaded bomb 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 figure excuse me figurating stuff in we've got ep fibers these are the 3d fibers and again with the ep fibers uh, when you get them they don't come on a hank so i take a wire tie and before i take them all out of the package i'll just put the top inch up out of the plastic cinch them down with a wire tie and now you know it's manageable as opposed to before where uh, it's not <laughs> so twist these together and we're only going to use half of that if you're going to tie more than one which you probably are just set the other half aside or if you're going to only use one color you're going to use all four pieces but we're going to use two colors today i'm going to show you how to do this in a two color variety because it looks better does it fit does a fish care probably not do you care I hope so. Well, attention to detail. We're going to take, for this particular color for the watermelon, we're going to use uh, pink and chartreuse. And we're just going to cut the fiber into two inch sections. Now we got two chartreuse sections and two pink sections. But you're going to grab your section like so, twist it together, get it nice and bundled. And you're gonna hold it at a 90 degree angle to the hook shank. And you're gonna start figurating it in. Now inevitably, it's gonna turn a little bit like that. Remain calm. Pull this back, get your thread on the other side of it, and put three wraps on this side. I'm gonna put four on that side and kind of level it out. There we go, and that's straight. Now, instead of taking your next clump, and putting it in and then having to compete with the green and the pink the whole way down. Take the jaws from the dub and loop twister. You can take that off and use your hackle pliers and just pinch that back. And now they're out of the way. Now you can take your next color, get in there close, wrap it down, See how much easier that is than having to try to split your way through two different colors or split your way through. Take it and repeat the process. Take your green, tie it in tight to the pink, three or four wraps. You don't have to go too crazy. You actually kind of want to keep these light on the thread wraps. Heavy in the paint, light on the thread wraps. I'm sorry, hard in the paint. God, I'm showing the color there. Last one. You can see how much more room we have now. We'll be able to put in some sweet lead eyes. You can use this fly. You can tie it any weight you want. I generally like this fly a little bit heavier. These are small lead double pupil eyes from Hairline Dubbin. And they are pretty badass looking. We'll use hot pink. And we're going to figure eight these in as well. Put two securing wraps over them. Then we'll take a little bit of loon hardhead. Just put a little bitty drop right there. This isn't a UV product. This is going to cure as it dries. So it works well for this application, which would be, you know, just making sure these lead eyes don't go anywhere without using super caustic, harmful, corrosive super glues, which I'm sure are great for the environment. We'll use this stuff, it's non-toxic. If you're not gonna use a weed guard, you can just whip finish right now. But if you are gonna use a weed guard, I will show you 
Take your piece of 30 or 40 pound mason hard mono, pair of pliers, flatten out one little section of the end there. We should probably do a video just for how to apply a weed guard. We might do that. Use the macro lens. Anyway, take this, hold it where, over where we're going to put it, tie it in. Put a few behind it, whip finish over the weed guard, or behind the weed guard. You can pull up both sides and trim them at the same time. If you're not going to put a weed guard on, it, it's pretty easy. I've never really been a big fan of doing it that way. I'd rather just mess up one side at a time than to put both up and mess up both sides. Um, there's never a way to get these totally right. You'll have to trim a thousand gangster crabs or a thousand toad bodies. Uh, before you are able to get them perfectly symmetrical. Um, the only thing I would tell you is nothing in nature is symmetrical, so uh, your flies aren't going to be either. So just accept it, move on, love yourself, girl, or nobody will. Not bad. And next we'll finish it with some Loon UV fly finish and thin. You can use thin, flow, thick, doesn't matter. Uh, I like the thin because it's just it stays a little it stays put a little better than the flow, and uh, we're just going to go over the thread wraps. We're going to put some on top of the eyes, in front of the weed guard. Just a light, thin candy shell. Don't go too crazy. Hit it with your light. And that right there, my friends, is how you tie gangster crab.